What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? Don't ever wait for your doctor to order blood tests. With Private MD Labs, you can get your blood test prescription online in under one minute and go directly to over 4,000 lab locations in the United States. They offer every blood test imaginable at affordable prices with highly accurate results from tried and true state-of-the-art blood testing diagnostics. In fact, I've been using Private MD Labs for more than a decade. Their blood tests are much more in-depth and accurate than any at-home pinprick or worthless saliva test. Skip the intrusive doctor questions and get the exact tests that I recommend. Be proactive and get your panels today. Go to privatemdlabs.com forward slash JC to take 15% off your order. Send you guys love and light. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be around the world I am Jay Campbell, and of course, this is the Jay Campbell Podcast, and I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio by an amazing man by the name of Juan Lee. Juan, how are you, brother? I'm doing fine, Jay, and yourself? I'm doing just as good as having you on my show today. So Juan (laughs) and I have actually been talking off air about a lot of good things, so I can assure everybody today this is going to be an amazing podcast. Let me give you his bio. Juan is a transformational speaker thought leader and an author. He has seen the message of love and it's made that's made so difficult that it's confusing. He removed the confusion by making it very simple. He has neutralized religions and made the message of love universal. Juan finds the things that we have in common instead of looking for the things that divide us. Very important. In religion, the vehicle is God and the message is love. Apart from God, the vehicle is humanity and the message is love. We all have love in common. Juan will show you how that we first learn to love ourselves and then love others. He shows you how to use love in every stage of life to produce the fulfillment you desire in your life. And then Juan shows you how to identify personal success for yourself, making sure, making you aware of obstacles that cause growth and not failures. He will give you the tools needed to operate in love so that you will never fail, which ultimately leads to peace, contentment with your needs met. Love is the formula for a successful life experience. So I agree with all of that stuff. And that is why this amazing man is on my show here today. Let me ask you, because this is what I've been doing a lot in the Jay Campbell podcast, at least the last three months. And just for a timestamp, today is Thursday, January 20th. What do you see before we get into the topics uh, for humanity? Where, where are we going? Is it, are we in the stage of there's still darkness before the dawn, you know, because obviously I believe that we are creating and carving out the golden age or the new earth or whatever you want to call it. But is there still a lot of people that haven't yet gotten to the place of awareness or being awakened or whatever you want to call it that we still have to go through, you know, again, as the ancients have said, or the ancient teachings and texts and, 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 and books say, you know, there's darkness before dawn. But what are your thoughts on that? I think we're in a transition. Yeah. We're in a transition. And I think my message is timely in the sense that it's this time and the message of love that we can make it through this transition um, because we're on the, we're on the crust of destruction, to be Mm -hmm. honest with you. Yeah. Because the way in which I view it or I see it is, is that, Division is the beginning of destruction. Mm-hmm. And we are internally, internally divided. And that's a struggle with us and our nation. But this is the same state that the world is in. Mm-hmm. We can't find that commonality called humanity and grasp it and understand that it's through love that we can come together and see value in one another. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're we're in a, a very pivotal point in our existence, I believe. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well said. I would agree with that. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. Everybody at a soul level is doing exactly what they need, right? For evolution and growth. So whatever you choose to think or believe is best for you, you do it anyway at a soul level. So, you know, nothing is bad or good. Everything is happening exactly as it's divinely intended, but you know, it's not easy because, you know, you have family, friends, relatives, peers, you know, brothers, sisters, whatever, uh, you know, who push for one thing. And then you have some that push for the other. And there's just this, you know, constant back and forth of like what you should do or what is the right thing to do. Or, you know, it's, it's not an easy time to be around in today's day and age. And, you know, to, to, to live in peace. I mean, it's, it's, it's really, I would say somewhat difficult, you know, you can choose to withdraw, you know, and be a creative personality or a creative, a creator, you know, a conscious co-creator, but it's, 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 it's it seems like it's getting more and more difficult. And that's why I love your message. So the, the first uh, point that you've given me is, is why is love so important for humanity right now? Well, it's, it's exactly what you just you just uh, articulated. And it's the fact is, is that we need to understand that we have to have something in common mm -hmm. with one another. Mm -hmm. If we're going to if we're going to get past this time, if we're going to be able to extend humanity into the future, we've got to be able to understand that we have to have something in common. That's the only way that we're going to be able to resolve this issue that we have and it's and it's everybody has a different perspective and see it's because of that perspective that we can't even begin to have conversation hmm. see we're we're talking past one another instead of to one another sure and see because of that we can't even begin and what it takes to have that conversation is tolerance we've True. got to be accepting the fact that the reason that we are in existence as individuals is because we have something that's unique. We are uniquely made for this time. And without understanding that, we can't see each other's value. Mm -hmm. And it's because of when we can see that value, then we can begin to see the need to be tolerant. Because just because you don't have the same concept or perspective that I have, doesn't mean that it's not valuable to me. Right. And that's where we suffer from this thing of being in, you know, exclusive versus inclusive. And so we it, humanity is that commonality. I don't care where you are on the face of this earth. If you are that species that is considered considered a human being, then we have that in common. And that's the species that we're trying to maintain, trying to preserve, trying to uh, protect. That's what we're here to do. It's this dispensation that we've been charged to be able to invest into humanity for the next generation so that they can carry the banner of humanity into the future. But we've got to come together. We've got to understand that that's why we're here. We live in a temporary experience, right. a part of something that's greater than we are. We've got to grasp that and understand it. And we've not had that type of understanding or teaching that we can, that we can basically understand why are we here? Mm. We have a purpose and it's really the same that every one of us has. And that is to protect your 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 legacy my legacy into the next generation beautiful i mean you said earlier it's da we're dangerously close to destruction and i think you know i obviously i podcast with a lot of amazing people such as yourself you know very high conscious people people who have awakened who are aware who are clear and and have clarity about their mission and purpose. And there are many like you and me who realize that it is time is running out, right? Like we, ha everything you're saying is we do have to come together or, you know, I would assume Juan, what happens is what's happened many other times 
in the human experience was we've blown ourselves up. We've literally rebooted. We went back to the basics of like barely survival, losing everything, you know, civilization, modernization, technology, whatever it is. And it seems like we're right back on that same path. It's like we can't seem to come together to figure out that, like you said, that we are unified. We are all together as souls, as one. You know, there is unity at that level. What What is your solution? You know, what is the solution that will allow us to come together? I think the first thing is we've got to be one with self. We've got to understand that the first thing that love does is it allows us to be one with self. See, because until we can develop and accept and, and come into a knowledge as to what we have to offer this thing called humanity, we talked earlier about it being an investment. You've got to be able to develop this investment so that you can give it to humanity. And I think so many of us have looked at and allowed the circumstances that are around us to dictate to us what it is that we have or we don't have to offer. And then that began to identify who we are. Right. And that's the problem. We are unique. This is the message that we need to understand that you and I, each and every one of us, are, have a uniqueness that the other one needs. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter where you come from. It about, it's about what you have developed into who you are and what you can, what you basically bring to the table. Right. And it's, and here's the thing. There is no person that doesn't have something to bring to the table. Nobody. If you are breathing, you have something to bring to the table. That's exactly right. The, nature doesn't create copies. Nope. There's no copies. Everybody has got unique divinely innate skills. And as you know, some people never discover them because they get, they get hooked into the central, what I call the human central computer and they live their life according to what others tell them they need to do or what they think they need to do or, you know, to get a job or whatever it is. And then they never, ever express their, again, that uniqueness that they have, but that's a beautifully uh, articulated thought. I mean, uh, I, and obviously I'm in total agreement. Um, to go deeper on love though, how does it work for you and I? How does love work? <laughs> it, it, it really gives us the proper attitude to navigate life. That's the big, that's the big takeaway for love is that it allows us and gives us the attitudes that allow us to keep the same state of peace, contentment with our needs met at all times. It keeps us balanced. It keeps us in this state of clarity mm -hmm. to navigate life. And that's what we're here to do is the, to embrace the experience in a way that we can begin to reach our potential and yet still be fulfilled in that abilities on those abilities that we have to offer. Cause that's what fulfillment is, is the ability to serve others. Exactly. That's what it is. And so when we allow love, which is the acts on behalf of others, we begin to get fulfilled because it's coming from a place of sincerity. It comes from a place of, of, of individuality where I'm such a unique being that I have something that no one else can offer. You know, I always like to say that what, you know, your purpose is to serve others, you know, at your highest and best capacity, you know, without attachment to any defined outcome. Right. Now that's obviously cliche in a lot of ways, but the purpose really of life is service because that's when you, like you said, you will feel contentment. Um, and it's, it, it, you know, I, even myself, I'm sure you, anybody, I mean, you know, we are human, but I mean, with today's day and age with all this technology and these distractions and all of this stuff, 
you know, sometimes you get caught up in the doing, doing, doing instead of the being right. And living with that purpose of just enjoying every moment, the now space or whatever. And I, you know, I think we all become slaves to that aspect of like wanting to do, you know, and again, do, 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 do without actually being and living in that state of joy. But you're right. I mean, love is literally the answer um, it's, to it's all the, the moment. Yeah. It's the, it's being able to understand that we only have the moment. Right. And that's the, that's the mindset that you have to have in, in, in navigating this experience because tomorrow is not promised. Right. And we understand that this is temporary and your value is in the moment. And that's only that which you have to offer is in that moment. So every moment is important. Mm. Every moment. And so that's why when when you have this peace, man, it allows you to appreciate the moments mm. because they are not promised. And to be able to reach your potential in that moment, that's all we have. That's it. It gives us it gives us intention in our daily operation. It's just not, you know, what happens. It's intentionally happened. You're controlling this moment, but with intention. Now, obviously, I agree with you, but I'm going to do play devil's advocate just for the audience that isn't where you and I are from an awareness standpoint. Okay, Juan, that's great, but, you know, I got to pay my bills. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I'm serious. I hear you. I yeah, hear I know you, you do. So I got to pay my bills. You know, I got my two kids to feed and, you know, I got to be at the cubicle by 730 every morning. My boss is difficult, blah, blah. What would you say to that person who's caught up in the rat race mentality of, you know, literally not even able to embrace that present precious moment, that now space, because they're so caught into the doing of their day-to-day -day existence? I'm going to get you, I'm going to hit you right at the, the answer, but I'm going to tell you up front that this is a process. Okay. Right. It's a process. The mere fact that you realize that you want change is going to be critical. Okay. You've got to desire to realize is something that I heard Robert Kiyosaki say is that you're on the rat race. You're, you're basically on this doggone, you're chasing the cheese. Right. Okay, you're on this, this, this wheel that's just going round and round. You've got to recognize that you're on, you're, you're chasing the cheese. Okay, no matter how you, however you do it, you're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And what my message of love does is basically says, I'm going to give you an alternative. Okay, you've tried it your way. Okay, now try something different. Mm -hmm. that, that's basically it. Because at the end of the day, it's a choice. It's a choice. It's the choice to be able to love and allow love to change you. It's a choice. Nobody can make you, but nobody can stop you. It's all up to you. And what I do with the, with the attitudes is that you get you use the attitudes to begin to change the way you view your situations. And soon as you change, as soon as you begin to change that view, your situation changes. Your perspective will dictate the, the how you view your situation. Instead of saying, you know, I have to be at the cubicle or this, you start to backing up and say, okay, what does it take for me to get to that cubicle at 730? You know, I got children to feed. What does it take for me to chill? What does it take? Start being proactive versus reactive. See, we want to be, re we want to react to the circumstances mm. instead of addressing the circumstance, preventing the circumstances and creating the circumstances that you want. See, we, we, we've got to stop being victims instead of being proactive, looking at the situation and saying, okay, what can I have done? What have what could I have done to have changed the circumstances? 
Stop looking at what they are and say, because here's the point. Until we decide to change, we're going to repeat them. You can't help but repeat them. Right. And so to think that they're not they're going to go away just because you don't like them is not going to be the answer. We've got to change something. And the biggest thing is our perspective. Change your perspective by using the attitudes and you can begin to make those changes that make a difference in your life instead of just making a, a, a decree uh, or, or a New Year's resolution. Hey, guys, what's going on? If you're looking to level up your life from a mind, body, and spiritual perspective, join the Fully Optimized Health private membership group today. There is no better place online to discuss hormones, peptides, fitness, fat loss, supplements, and even raising your consciousness with an elite tribe of men and women. You also get to speak to me directly every single week in the Ask Me Anything. Join today. Go to Fully Optimized Health dot com and sign up and i'll see and talk to you soon why is it so difficult for human beings i mean i know it was for me uh and i'm almost 51 now i'll be 51 in a month uh why is it so difficult for humans to love and trust themselves well here's the thing about about love it's a sacrifice and you've got to be willing to give yourself to love. You've got to say that love is supreme. It has the answers. The way I like to say it is love is the system that is that success that we gain success through. Because here's the thing. If we only knew, see, this is the interesting thing. We don't get a blueprint or, or, or a book to model how to live. Mm -hmm. And what we've learned is, is that we out here on our own trying to do the things, trying to figure it out for ourselves. Yeah. But life is so interesting. It repeats itself over huh. and over again with new characters. And here we are still trying to figure out something that it hasn't changed. Yeah. yeah. But yet the solutions are never the same. If we come together, if we realize that we need each other, have an attitude of, 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 of service, of an attitude of togetherness, then we all win in humanity. We all do. We all partake in that experience together, but we have in turn decided to be, you know, what works for me. It's the selfish attitude. That's the mm -hmm. attitude that prevents us from being able to love. Because the first the thing is, is that we, we've got a misunderstanding as to what love is. But let me tell you this, love really will, it will dictate or de determine what your motivation is. It's an act that will determine your motivation because you can love to do wrong or to do bad. But when we say love for humanity, it, it takes the perspective now that my experience is going to be on the behalf of somebody else. And I'm a partaker in that someone else because I'm a part of humanity. But we don't see it that way. We see it as love as something that we can heed on to ourselves. It's a selfishness. And we're never going to be able to get the benefit and the, the, the results or the outcome of love trying to heap something on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Beautifully stated. How how do you how do you identify personal success? <laughs> See, that's very interesting because success is just an outward example of something that's internal. Exactly. Okay. But 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 the bigger champ, the bigger answer is, and this is what we confuse the difference between success and fulfillment. See, because we're after internal fulfillment mm -hmm. and we look outside and you can be successful looking right. and fulfill and empty on the inside from the lack of fulfillment. Because and I think honestly, the majority of people are like that. I think the majority of people like are like that today in society that outwardly look they got that they got everything going again, depending on how you define things. 
but because they're slaves to that system, they are inwardly not fulfilled at all. And, you know, I like to say this and let you react to this, you know, happiness is a transient feeling and joy is a state of being. I would agree a hundred percent, but you can't say happiness and people, they, they, they accept happiness as temporarily as you can get it, exactly. knowing that it, it, it only temporary. I mean, yeah. you talk about this experience of life being temporary. Happiness is even less temporary than that. It is. Yeah. That's chasing the cheese right there is like attempting to be happy. <laughs> this is, but see, but that's what we're selling in our society. We're selling happiness. We it's want crazy. that experience. We want that temporary experience thinking that that's what it is. But here's the point. We're looking for it from someone else. Right. And we're never going to, it only can be temporary. It only can be temporary if you're looking for it from someone else. And that's what we've come to find as being acceptable. It's acceptable to have temporary happiness because it doesn't matter because we have no evidence or any any proof that that happiness can be long term because it isn't intended to be long term. What you're after is fulfillment and you can only get that by developing yourself and giving it to someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's 100 percent true. I mean, I recognize that in my own life. Um, it's a difficult, you know, it, it's not easy in today's world again with all this technology and the constant you know bombardments of imagery towards us especially for younger people uh, of them to truly understand what you know defines fulfillment what defines inward joy peace contentment because i think you're right i think that you know happiness chasing the cheese is what is what's you know that's the narrative you know I mean, you know this. All you have to do is go on Instagram. And my God, that's all it is. I mean, it's literally, you know, up, down, back, forth, you know, swipe left, swipe right. You know, everybody is marketing the state of chasing the cheese. I love that. I'm going to use that from now on, you know, <laughs> of this transient up and down existence versus getting to a place where they can overcome the mind and getting to a place of silence or stillness or just, you know, again, inward contentment. I love that, you know, a place of joy. And I think, you know, Juan, it's, it's, it, it, there's, there's so much out there that's distracting people now. Um, especially in today's day and age now with the fear mongering and the victimhood aspects of things. And, you know, again, you go out in public and people will look at you if you're not wearing a mask or if you are wearing a mask. I mean, it just, it's completely crazy. You know, what is morphed as behavior? I mean, I, I know you know this, right? But just like three years ago, and, and I know I can't even believe it. It's, it was in 2019 before all this nonsense occurred, but it, it's like, it, it, it's like a thousand years ago now from 2019 to today, the way people look at each other, the way people treat one another, the way people are in crowds. I mean, it's crazy what has transpired. So, I mean, it, well, everything you're saying, it just makes it more, it, 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 it's even more important now than it even was then because people didn't actually, they, they didn't miss these little things then. you know, it was actually much more real to be around people and to be accepting and condoning and allowing and now everything is just judgment well i i think this is probably a a, a pivotal point like i said before yeah. because I, I honestly believe that this last few years right has basically uncovered a lot of things that were not being spoken right and what this pandemic has done is just perpetuated it. I mean, just a look, just blew it up just so very, very, very clear. And it's now at a point where we can't avoid it. Yeah. We cannot avoid it. And here's the fr here's the, the fear, the, the scary thing about it is that no one has an answer. Mm -hmm. And what I'm suggesting is, is that let's just love one another. 
let's realize and recognize that we're in this thing together. Okay, and what does that take? It, first of all, it takes sacrifice. We have to be willing to accept the fact that the greater good is in the protecting and preserving humanity. That's the greater good. That's the greater good here. And if we can do that, what would it take to protect and preserve humanity? See, people that are living right now think that things have always been this, I'm gonna say, quote unquote, this way in the sense that, you know, let me just be clear. America's 250 years old. That's a baby in the big scheme of things. We have to realize that. That we are this this thing that we're existing right now, and even the way that we consider and carry ourselves as being, let's use America, just America, is that we're the most powerful and the most resourceful and the best thing standing right now. And the key mm -hmm. is right now. Right now, there's no telling what will be the thing a hundred years from now. Right. We might not even be here a hundred years from now. Again, you're absolutely right. Until we decide that it's important, see, it, it's understood that this thing is just going to continue. Right. right. No. I think you're of the age to understand that there was a time and frame that this. Humans had the ability to destroy the world as we know it. Yeah. Yeah. Each one of us, each, each there were sides that would were contemplating how we could win a world war through nuclear with nuclear. Yeah, annihilation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this was this is something that's within our lifespan, you and I. Sure. Sure. But yet that that's phased out. And now we're in a time and place where we're going, oh, this thing is. No, we have the capacity and the uh, ability to destroy this thing. And I think we're on a good course for it. If we don't recognize that we have something in common. Yeah, we've got to bring the walls of division down and begin to see the things that we have in common. And humanity is what we all have in common. If we want to see the next generation's progress or to progress into the future, we've got to stop this division. We've got to do what it called, whatever, whatever it takes to sacrifice to so that humanity will survive. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? If you're looking to use peptides, make sure you go to my number one source, Limitless Life Nootropics. For healing with BPC-157 and TB-500 or fat loss with Ipamorelin, CGC-1295 and AOD-9604 to immunity with TA-1, thymus and alpha-1, Limitless has a huge selection. Go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com and use my code J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. So much has changed in the last two years and so much has shifted. Uh, I could argue that there's no hope, but I could also argue that for the people that it doesn't appear to be hope, they just don't make it. And the people that, you know, are living in love or in living in contentment or, you know, the truth of joy, uh, they create a whole new world. They create a whole new, uh, you know, a new earth, so to speak. So it, it's, it's interesting. We're, you're right. We are in a phase of transition. My wife said last year that we are now all living in a time of adapting and pivoting and that you have to be ready to get up and just leave and, and, and change course like that. You know what I mean? Like, especially with the way the world is now with the mandates and, you know, all the craziness and depending on where you live and what state you're in or what country you're in. I mean, it's all insane. I mean, I, you know, I was just, I have a good friend that he writes copy for me in Canada and, you know, he's been telling me the insanity of Canada right now, you know, and it's unbelievable. And, you know, I, thankfully, you know, living in the United States, sometimes I don't think we 
we don't realize like how much freedom we still enjoy here comparatively to some of the other countries who have, you know, observed these draconian measures. So I, I, I think, you know, it does come back to the place of like having the awareness that if you are in a place where you're still free, you know, relatively speaking, to be grateful for that, you know, that energy of gratitude is a very powerful thing. I think that's, I think that's necessary. I think, I think the, the issue is, is that we're not recognizing the fact that what freedom and liberty looks like mm -hmm. from each one's perspective, mm -hmm. from each person's perspective. And I think that's where the degree of tolerance comes in because we can think that we're free, we are uh, have liberty, but if you don't feel that you have freedom and liberty, then are we both operating out of the same perspective, talking about the same thing? Right. And see, that's where I'm talking about tolerance comes in, is being able to see the same thing a different way. Mm -hmm. The same thing a different way and be acceptance of what it is that the other person is seeing the way they are seeing it in spite of the fact that it's not the way you're seeing it. Right. That's tolerance. That's love. That's what it means because we're all subject to the collective, right? not the individual. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to gather that commonality so that we can navigate collectively what this experience is going to look like for the next generation, for the future. We can hold forward, we can hold strong on the way in which we view it, but yet we still will lack the ability of unity. And that's what I'm saying, unity is what is gonna allow us to be able to, to evolve into what our potential is. Because I need you, you need me. The reason that we're here together is because we need one another. Right. And that's the issue is that people don't see that commonality. They can't, they can't see the tie that binds us, but truly at a soul level, we're all one. We are all connected. You know, we have to articulate that, though. We've got to be able to articulate it through our actions and how we perceive other people in our day to day actions, because it's it's a it's a moment by moment, situation by situation. And it's a choice. Mm -hmm. It's a choice to recognize that person's uniquenesses. Yeah. Instead of holding strong to my my own personal perspective. If I can, I'll give you three of the characteristics of, of, of love. Please do. And the first characteristic is something as a chameleon. And what it does is it adapts. It blends in to whatever the circumstances are. Here's the kicker. For the purpose of success for everybody. So I'll give up what my belief is for the sake of the, the group. Because nice. that's what's the important is that we all succeed. The second characteristic of love is that it's a conduit. It connects us one to another without any type of agenda because we all have the same purpose in mind. And just as I've talked before, the last one is what gets love over the top. And that's the one that we all have the opportunity to administer and that it's a choice. It lays the foundation, gives us the connection, and then it's a choice to be a part of. And that's where all of us has the ability to come together and love one another. No one can stop you from doing it. No one can cause you to do it. It's an internal thing that you've got the desire to want to do it. It's beautiful. And those, those, I assume those pieces are from your book, Love Made Simple. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> the, the book is more of a, a guide uh, to your journey. And it's a guide at any stage in your life. It's at it's it's from teenagers to seniors. And at each end of each end of, at the end of each chapter, I give you pathways to success in every stage in life. If you're a teenager, if you're a young adult, if you're an adult or senior, there are pathways that we can gain success at that in that stage. We need each other. The senior is just as important to the to the teenager as the teenager is important to the senior. I love that you say you say love is not a feeling, but it, it, it's more of a discipline and a choice. It determines how you look at any situation. It leads you to making sacrifices in your own life for the people that you love and the people that you barely know. That see to me, that's very significant because we have to get to a place where we love equally. The people that we live with and spend the majority of our time with and the people that we don't even have any idea about who we just come across, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, walking in a grocery store, uh, an airport or whatever. And, and when you can get to that level of love, acceptance, that's when you will understand, you know, those three things that you're just talking about of how you can be the chameleon and you can learn how to blend in and love equally. Well, and that's that's the, that's it, though. I mean, the, the ability to be able to do this is to understand that we all ha we have this thing called humanity in common. Mm -hmm. See, I can't look at you and think that you're not human. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take much. I mean, I see a human being. I mm -hmm. see you as a human being. Right. Can we do that? See, we we, we struggle with that very simplistic thing and we're not we're not able to accept one another for what let's not even look at what differences we have let's desire to find the things that we have in common okay i might have not have the same skin tone as you <laughs> but the fact of the matter is is okay let's look past that you got two eyes i got two eyes you got well, a pretty close in skin tone huh <laughs> I said we're pretty close in skin tone. <laughs> well, no, but my, my point I'm is, kidding, is that, I'm kidding. you know, hey, everybody can't look as good as I do. I get it. I understand. Okay? Yeah. It, so, so we're going to get past that, you know? And so let's get to the point where we can have something in common. Right. And, and, and that's what it is. It's, it's that guy next door is just as passionate about his family as you are about yours. Right. And the thing right. about it is, is that that means that you all have something in common with the guy next door. Yeah. You know, that it's, it's very easy. You know, we just got to want to do it. Beautiful, man. So I'm going to put uh, your social sites up, then I'll get to your uh, nonprofit in a second. But uh, you guys love Made Simple. You can get the book at juanleetheauthor.com. Uh, he also has a Facebook group, Juan Lee Author, and his IG page is Juan Lee Author. But he really wanted me to talk about his nonprofit, which is clearjourney.org. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, this is basically came out of the book Love Made Simple because it's the practical application of love. And what we do is we teach teenagers and young adults financial literacy and attitudes for success in navigating life. Beautiful. That's what it's all about. Allowing the young people to be able to navigate life without having to fall into some of the pitfalls, you know, those things that really financial, you think about financial mm -hmm. problems, they will keep you in bondage for your life. Yeah. If you're not, if you don't, you're not, you're not careful. Yeah. And what we're going to do is we're trying to prevent people, the young people from getting into that burden because it's dream killers. Mm -hmm. Debt is dream killers. Goal, they won't they prevent you from being able to reach your goals and your full potential. And that's what we want to do is to give them the right attitude about those things that will allow them to be successful um, in their journey called life. Amazing, man. Well, I'm grateful that I was able to speak with you today on this podcast. Uh, I actually am sick right now for the people watching this podcast. Uh, I'm well enough to have this podcast with Juan. Uh, he's an amazing man, as you guys can tell. 
And uh, he was able to very much help me get through today. And we actually talked off air about a lot of other stuff. But uh, Juan, I, I wish you amazing success in your life. Uh, I will definitely now become a fan and buy your book actually today and order it so I can, can I read it? I definitely want to pick it up. Um, do you have any final thoughts? Hey, I'm I'm looking for people that are willing to walk this this journey with me, especially with the nonprofit. I'm looking for partners and I'm looking for sponsors. Um, let me know if anybody's interested in being a partner. Um, we we're wanting to walk this journey together. It's not one that's meant by you know to be alone. We're in this thing together, and uh, understanding that love is the answer to whatever the situation is. That's right. Love is the answer. Brother, beautiful. Uh, so guys and gals watching the Jay Campbell podcast, support uh, this amazing person's clearjourney.org. That's his nonprofit. Go to his website, juanleetheauthor.com. Pick up his book. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.